everyone. My name is Vicar Ricky Beckett from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Union, Missouri. We continue today with the first table of the Ten Commandments, which deals with how we relate to God as God's people. And the second table, which is Commandments 4 through 10, deal with how we relate to our neighbor, but for now, we are still in the first table in our relationship to God. The second commandment commands us not to misuse the name of God, or as we say it today, not to take his name in vain. And the small catechism explains this commandment. We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie, or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. Of course, the first thing that comes to mind with how we take his name in vain is cursing with it, such as, and pardon my French here, G damn it, and so forth. Yet this is not the only way in which we take his name in vain or even curse with it. We also curse with God's name when we use his name to actually curse a person, such as, I'll, I hope to God that you get hit by a car. Or something like that. Now, within this realm of cursing with God's name, Luther added to this the use of satanic arts or spells. This is the practice of the occult, such as uh, mediums, psychics, and even Ouija boards. In Luther's day, even before his day, people called it magic, which is still actually still used today this magic is is not what you think of in harry potter uh, so it's not sinful or anything to read the books or watch the movies this is actual magic that deals with demons that's what magic is in the true sense of the word uh, we still have people claiming today to be mediums and, and psychics some of them might be frauds but there are definitely people out there who actually succeed in and using satanic arts. This satanic magic is not the stuff of fiction. It's real. Demons are real, and therefore <laughs> dealing with them is real in these ways. An example of this uh, in scripture is when King Saul consulted a medium to speak with the deceased Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 28. Instead of fearing, loving, and trusting in God above all, all things, right, we just learned about that last Friday from the first commandment, Saul violated the second commandment by consulting a medium using satanic arts, thus profaning God's name by misusing it. Another way in which we misuse God's name is when we use his name for purposes of falsehood. In, large, in the large catechism, Luther says we are commanded in this commandment to use God's name for truth and for all good, like when someone takes an oath truthfully when it is needed and it is demanded. This is coming from Numbers 30, verse 2, which says, If a man vows a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by a pledge, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. So if you take the oath of marriage and break your vows through infidelity, abandonment, or divorce, guess what you're doing? You commit a falsehood and take God's name in vain since you took those vows before God's presence. Or if you take a military oath and go AWOL, which means absent without leave, or commit treason or some other war crime, you're taking God's name in vain. Well, <clears throat> at least in the U.S. Army, since the vow we take ends with, so help me God. Um, as I served in the army, I don't know about the other branches, but I imagine it probably ends the same way. Or when an ordained pastor breaks the seal of confession or profanes his office in some other way, he takes God's name in vain, and so on. Luther argued that this commandment also applies to right teaching and to calling on his name in trouble or praising and thanking him in prosperity and so on. So when false teachers and preachers spread false doctrine and heresies like the prosperity gospel, work righteousness, and so forth, they're taking God's name in vain by misusing his name to teach such false teachings. And when a person blames God for trouble in the world, he profanes God's name 
because he's misusing it by saying God, God made or caused this to happen when in fact it was us and or the devil. And when a person praises himself for his prosperity and success rather than God, he profanes God's name since all things come from God. All things of this world that we receive for our own good come from God. Lastly, Luther says, we profane God's name when we assert in God's name something that is not true. So if someone comes up to you and says, oh, God came to me in a dream and told me this, and it doesn't match up with scripture, they're profaning his name. There have even been people who claim that God told them to kill people, like serial killers and mass murderers. This would be asserting something as untrue and thus profaning his name. While this commandment tells us how not to use God's name, it also tells us how to properly use it, specifically to call upon God's name, as it says, in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. So rather than blaming God for our trouble in the world and our lives, we use his name rightly when we call upon his name, when we call upon him to help us in our troubles. We also use his name rightly when we pray to him for our needs, hence the Lord's Prayer, and as well as praising him and giving thanks. So during this time of the coronavirus, how might we have been taking his name in vain? Are we blaming him for the virus rather than where the blame truly belongs, us and the devil? Or are we calling upon his name to help us and to pray for those who are suffering? Are we still praising and thanking God in the midst of these troubles? Like, like the other commandments, this commandment shows us where we fail as God's people and brings us to repentance to trust in the mercy of God's forgiveness in Christ Jesus. So if the law of the second commandment has revealed to you that you've profaned God's name in some way during this video, take some time after the video to repent. Trusting in the mercy of Christ to forgive you all your sins, which were nailed to him on the cross and left in the empty tomb when he rose again. In the meantime, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.